Welcome to this sequence of videos where we will be practicing differentiation skills. There will be many problems, uh, around 45-50 problems, where we're going to practice all differentiation skills we learned, starting from basic formulas, product rule, quotient rule, and chain rule, going up to uh, implicit differentiation, exponential functions, logarithms, logarithmic differentiation, and so on. In this video, we're going to do basic derivative formulas, power rule, sine, cosine, and product rule, quotient rule. Before we start, let's review some basic trigonometric functions uh, and their derivatives. Derivative of sine is cosine, of co derivative of cosine is minus sine, derivative of tangent is secant squared, derivative of, uh, I remember first, secant, copies itself secant times tangent, and then from this cosecant copies itself and now goes cotangent and also there's a negative sign in front of it. Derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So secant alternates with cosecant and then tangent gives you positive derivative, cotangent gives you negative derivative. Also let's review product rule and quotient rule. Presentation of which I give in my classes u times v, that's product rule, will be u prime v plus u v prime product rule and quotient rule u over v prime well we start with squaring denominator or else you'll forget it later then derivative of the top numerator copy denominator minus copy derivative remember that the order here matters because of the negative sign. That's a quotient rule. Quotient rule. Okay, let's start knowing these formulas. I think we can find a start. Of, I guess let's review also what is the derivative of x to the n. n goes down, we're multiplying by n, times x to the n minus 1. These four, uh, this should be enough to complete all the problems for this video. First one is 7 sine x plus 12 tangent x minus x cube. y prime becomes 7 cos n x plus 12 tangent is secant squared, secant squared x minus 3 goes down x squared. Not too bad. Reminding you, note that secant square x is the same thing as secant x squared or secant times secant, but it's not the same as secant, guess what I'm gonna say, x squared. In this case, x is an input or an angle which is squared. The second part is the same as secant of x times x. Compare with secant x times secant x. So be careful with these little details. The second function I would first rewrite as x to the 6.5 minus x to the negative 7.5. Since x was in the denominator, we can rewrite it with a negative exponent. Now let's differentiate. So I did not differentiate it yet. I just rewrote the original function y. y prime will be 6.5x to the 6.5 minus 1, which is 5.5. Minus times minus gives you plus, so plus 7.5x. Negative 7.5 minus 1 becomes negative 8.5. Be careful with this. Sometimes you can see that we rewrite the negative exponent back to the denominator so it will be 7.5 over x to the 8.5 it's not very necessary to do it but just in case for you to know y equals tangent of e raised to the pi i don't see any variable here i see a constant this is some kind of number so what is the speed of the constant zero this one I would rewrite first as well 
as square root of 7x plus square root of 5 times square root of x. Review properties of uh, exponents. Which also, if you're not comfortable with differentiating square roots, then rewrite it as square root of 5 times x to the 1 half. But at some point I noticed, and many students just remember, that a square root of x prime is 1 half times x to the negative 1 half. But x to the negative 1 half is 1 over square root of x. You don't have to remember this formula, you know, too many things to memorize after all, uh, but I noticed that some students prefer to memorize this. Now I can differentiate y prime will be square root of 7 plus square, square root of 5 times 1 half x to the negative one half just like i mentioned before which becomes square root of seven plus square root of five over two and you can rewrite it as over square root of x now this one, if you don't feel comfortable differentiating 1 over x, I would recommend you to rewrite it as well. But again, I noticed that some students just remembered the 1 over x prime is negative 1 over x squared. That is because 1 over x is x to the negative 1. Negative one. When you differentiate it, negative goes down and it becomes x to the negative 2. But x to the negative 2 is 1 over x squared. You don't have to remember this, but the more you differentiate, the more flexible you become with what you remember and what you just do step by step. Let me rewrite it. 3 plus 8x to the negative 1 plus 410x to the negative 2. Differentiating this gives me negative 8. What happens to the 3? Derivative of 3 is 0 negative 8 x to the negative 2 minus 410 times 2 820 x to the negative 3 which can be rewritten back to negative 8 over x squared minus 820 over x cubed Last one in this chapter. Let's rewrite uh, square all the exponents again. Let's review this as well if you need. x raised to the eighth power with the root b root becomes x a over b. Review properties of exponents. So in this case, I know it's going to be x. You know how I remember? I remember that whoever stays on the top should be on the top. So x to the 9 usually looks higher than the root. So I know it's going to be a fraction. 9 over 4. 9 over 4. Plus 2x. 5 over what is here? 2. 5 over 2. Now we are ready to differentiate. y prime is 9 quarters goes down. We're multiplying by 9 quarters. x to the, and this is how you should hear it in your mind, 9 quarters minus 1 is 9 over 4 minus 4 over 4, which is 5 over 4. You don't have to do it this way. But this is how I do it in my mind, so maybe it's helpful for you as well. Plus 2 times 5 halves x to the 5 over 2 minus 2 over 2 is 3 over 2. 2 simplifies, and the answer becomes 9 quarter x to the 5 quarters 
plus 5 x to the 3 halves. The second chapter covered product rule and quotient rule. And here we're also playing with trigonometric functions, which I just reviewed at the beginning of the video. Let's see what we can differentiate right away and what needs to be simplified. Tangent, we know what derivative of tangent is. Y prime is secant squared x. What is derivative of cosecant? Well, if you don't remember, go to the box at the bottom. Cosecant copies itself, cosecant, times cotangent, and it is negative. So in this case, negative times negative becomes positive. Copies itself times cotangent. See table at the beginning. Second one we can do right away. Cosine gives me negative sine x plus cotangent gives me negative cosecant square x. I remember that tangent gives me secant square x, so cotangent gives me negative cosecant square x. We'll see how it's going to go with this one. This one seems to be quotient rule. I would do chain rule in this case, if be honest, but since in this chapter we don't cover chain rule, let's practice quotient rule. Quotient rule means I'm going to have u over v, in this case, looking like this. So, I will need to have a lot of space. y prime equals. Quotient rule says, a square the denominator, secant square. Differentiate the numerator, that's zero, because derivative of one is zero. Multiply by secant x, doesn't really matter because it's gonna be zero anyways. Minus, copy the top numerator, differentiate the denominator. What is derivative of secant? Hopefully you remember it, secant times tangent. Just show you the box. Secant x times tangent x. Now, after this, we can simplify a little bit. Secant times zero gives me zero. So it becomes negative secant x tangent x all over secant square x secant and squared simplifies here and it becomes negative tangent x all over secant x. Let's try to simplify this. What is tangent? Tangent is sine x over cosine x. What is secant? Secant is 1 over cosine. But since we have secant in a denominator, 1 over secant becomes cosine. Let me show you it step by step. 1 over 1 over cosine x. Dividing by fraction means multiplying by the reciprocal. So it becomes negative sine x all over cosine x times cosine x. Cosine can and cosine cancels out. And the answer is minus sine x. We can cancel out cosine and cosine and secant before, only when we know that they do not give you zero in denominator. But at the beginning, since we had secant in denominator, we assume that it does not give us troubles and it doesn't give zero in denominator. 10. Okay, quotient rule again. Let's do it. One more time. Y prime is squared denominator. And you know, don't do anything else with denominator. Squared and don't use the square of the sum or difference formula here. Just keep it like this. Derivative of the top gives me derivative of square root x. Maybe you now remember it's going to be 1 half x to the negative 1 half. I like it this way more times copy the denominator square root of x plus 6 
minus copy the numerator square root of x minus 5 times derivative of the denominator 1 half x to the negative 1 half nice let's try to simplify this I'm not going to simplify the denominator in any way so it's going to keep it as square root of x plus 6 squared to simplify the top I need to distribute everything carefully so I will distribute this piece and then this piece is going to be 1 half x to the negative 1 half times square root of x but square root of x square root of x is x to the 1 half what is happening when we're multiplying x to the 1 half to the x to the negative 1 half it becomes x to the 0 x to the 0 is 1 so the first piece is just 1 half then it becomes 1 half times 6 that's going to be 3 3 times x to the negative 1 half x to the negative 1 half minus now it's going to be let's put parentheses not to mess up our signs again x to the 1 half times x to the negative 1 half becomes 1 so it's just 1 half then minus 5 over 2 5 over 2 x to the negative 1 half okay 1 half and negative 1 half went away and now we can finally simplify collect together terms with x to the negative 1 half at the top 3 minus 5 halves well let's create common denominator 6 is a uh, 2 is a common denominator 6 over 2 minus not minus actually I'm wrong it's going to be 3 x to the negative 1 half plus because I have minus here and minus here 5 over 2 x to the negative 1 half all over square root of x plus 6 squared okay hopefully we're almost done 3 times 2 6 6 plus 5 it's 11 11 over 2 x to the negative 1 half square root of x plus 6 squared and finally the last step it's going to be 11 since we're dividing by 2 2 goes to the denominator since x has a negative exponent then it goes to the denominator as well and it is a square root of x times square root of x plus 6 keep it like it is do not distribute anything else anymore I think it's a good answer okay the next two problems will be quite long as I can see but let's see if we can do it in one video I don't see any problem simplifying here anything or tangent and secant maybe maybe we could simplify tangent and secant but from based from the solution I can see in front of me I think they just expect you to do quotient rule and product rule right away do you see product rule by the way it is u over v but there is also u times v in the denominator so that's going to be quotient rule plus product rule at the same time okay let's do it y prime is let's square the denominator everything squared derivative of the top the derivative of the tangent gives you secant squared x copy the bottom 6x secant x minus copy the top that's tangent x times derivative of the bottom that's product rule product rule says let's assume 6x is my u and secant is my v derivative of 6x is 6 copy secant 
Nice. Copy 6x, derivative of secant, that's secant x, tangent x. I would keep it as it is, but I can see that we are expected to factor something out and simplify. Okay, let's do it, why not? Definitely see some repetitive parts and let's maybe look what we can factor out. I would probably distribute everything first. X tangent, mm -hmm, I see. Let's distribute everything. Everything we see and then decide what's gonna happen. So it's going to be secant cube. 6x secant cube x from the first piece. Not too bad. Minus tangent 6 tangent x secant x. 6 tangent x secant x. That's the first red uh, arrow. The second one gives me 6x tangent square x secant x. And it's going to be minus because plus inside but minus outside. I forgot 6x tangent square secant. 6x tangent square x secant x. Don't forget the denominator, you have to keep it all the time. The denominator is 6x secant squared. 6x secant x squared. Okay, don't really see much to simplify, but I definitely see that 6 can be factored out and cancel out with a 6 in the denominator, and secant is everywhere. So let's factor out things that are repetitive. I see 6 is everywhere, and I see at least one secant everywhere in all those factors. Then let's factor them out. 6 secant x will be factored. Why would I do that? Because at the bottom, look at the denominator, I will have 6 squared x squared secant squared x. And this way I can simplify 6 and secant x with 1 6 and 1 secant x. I think that will be almost the last step. What will stay? x secant will stay secant squared actually. x secant squared x from the first term minus tangent minus tangent x minus x tangent squared x. So it seems like I can factor out one tangent minus tangent x factor out. You see tangent is repetitive as well in this part, in the second factor and the third factor. So it becomes minus tangent factored out. And inside of the parentheses it will be 1, because we factored everything, nothing left, plus x tangent x compare with your calculations, but I think we did a good job. That's the answer. Will I have to rewrite the denominator to look at, make it look it better? So it's going to be 6x squared secant x. Then whatever stays in the brackets, x secant squared x minus tangent x, 1 plus x tangent x. Nice. Good job. One more. We'll see how this one goes. I don't see anything to see. I wonder if we simplified in number 11 tangent and secant would be easier to do. But you guys can do it by yourself if you're curious and compare. 
because tangent and secant do have connections. I think it would be easier. I'm not sure. You decide. It's a good extra exercise. Y prime equals square the denominator and leave it as it is. 4 plus x to the 5 squared. Differentiate the top. What is cosecant? I don't remember. I remember secant. Secant prime gives me secant tangent. So cosecant kind of reverses everything. Gives me uh, itself. It copies itself. Cosecant x times cotangent x. And I also remember it's negative because secant is not negative. It does not give me negative derivative. Let's check again. I'm talking about this piece. Compare those two guys. Secant is secant times tangent. Cosecant and everything is reversed. Cosecant copies itself times cotangent and also negative. That's what I mean. That was derivative of the top. Copy the bottom. 4 plus x to the 5 minus. Copy the top. Cosecant x times derivative of the bottom. 5x to the 4. This looks good to me. But again, maybe we need to simplify something. Oh, actually we don't. I don't see any simplification in the solution in front of me. So it seems like this is a good answer. Which is very satisfying when you don't have to simplify so much. This is good enough for the one video. In the next video I will do chain rule and keep going. So definitely um, keep watching, keep practicing, and you will be very, very good at all of this. I always mention to my students that I'm good at this only because of one reason. I did it many, 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 many times. So if you do it many, many, many times, you'll be as good as me or even better. Thank you.